illegal uh, immigration. Well, the uh, mass illegal immigration continued apace despite uh, the new immigration law, the illegal migrants uh, law going well coming into law. It's going to get royal assent today. It's passed through the Lords and the Commons. Uh, but within 24 hours of that happening, a whopping, wait for it, 574 channel migrants arrived in the UK in just those 24 hours. Let's talk to Stephen Wolfe about that. He's director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Good morning to you, Stephen. Uh, good morning, Julia. I mean, it good is morning. just these numbers are just off the scale, and we, and we had the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak only a, a few weeks ago, sort of hailing how you know <laughs> the figures to June were looking really rather good. Uh, you know, it was down twenty percent on the previous year, which had been a record year, of course, so still massively high. But of course, we hadn't hit the the, the mild summer months, and wow, we are getting those summer months now, aren't we? Uh, we certainly are, and we certainly expect more. After all, uh, Europol, the Italians, and the European Commission were deeply concerned over the fact that it was nearly 350,000 uh, are expected to arrive via Greece and Italy this year. Um, mainly, obviously, those coming into Italy are coming up across uh, across the oceans from Africa. And when that those levels of numbers come to Europe, you know that a large proportion of them are going to have their way across it to the channel and try and cross over from that route as well as the route that's coming down from Afghanistan via Turkey which we now know is expecting around another 50,000 uh, later this year as well so the numbers and the pressures are not going to go away it is a big day for the government to get through finally the illegal migration act as it will become yeah. but of course the big centerpiece of that the Rwanda policy is going to be held up until the autumn because it's yeah. still in the courts and the Supreme yeah. Court now. Exactly. Needs to decide it's, whether it's possible. It's just going to keep on going. Every, everything does just keep on going, doesn't it? I mean, that's the thing. We, we never seem to actually get to the end of this, any action on it. Um, I mean, th th this is the interesting thing, though. This is this is one of the big five pledges that Rishi Sunak made. We've had all these pledges on the NHS. They're not working out. Pledges on the economy. They're not looking very promising right now. Stop the boats. Very, very clear policy. No one thought he was going to stop the boats, but a good effort to do so there's really no sign of any real action on that actually happening now the intentions i think are there and certainly from Sola Braverman, uh, the Home Secretary but there's just simply no sign of that any action is actually going to have an impact <laughs> what would what could they actually do with uh, living with what they've got in terms of home office civil servant activism and living and, and incompetence and dealing with you know lack of border force lack of french uh, uh, cooperation and indeed dealing with our woke judges what could they actually do that would make a difference i keep asking you this question let's come back to it okay well there are a short term and long term uh, responses to that. In the long term, I've called for for quite some time now that there needs to be an international convention that realigns the European, uh, the global uh, refugee convention yeah. at the UN level to exclude those who are claiming asylum who are actually economic migrants. And let's have the definitions clear. And let's have the definitions clear that it is actually illegal to enter a country unless you have a genuine reason for asylum, which is virtually the pr premise behind the Illegal Migration Act. Yep. That's first. Secondly, Europe also has deep concerns about it, but they need to look at how Schengen is working and put up a border around that too. Yep. Uh, and, and I think thirdly, in terms of the short term, it really takes a strong, strong government that has been giving millions, I mean, 350 million, half a billion proposed over three years to the French to actually say, you failed to actually achieve what we've asked you to do. Since 2014, when we started giving you money for the, for the fences and the borders there, and actually use the law internationally, SOLAS in particular, the law of the sea, and return them to France, yeah. just to put the political message to France that enough is enough. They may yeah. only have to do this once or twice, before the, the international ramifications of that comes in and the French might learn that we are actually going to be stronger. Yeah, indeed. And, and there's no doubt at all this is a massive issue across the whole of the Western world, really. It's happening in a big issue in America, it's a big issue you know, in Trump's original election, and it's certainly a big issue on the EU borders. And we are seeing that move towards uh, parties on the right and anti um, mass, well, this is people say anti immigration, anti mass immigration parties. And you know, George Maloney's election in Italy, um, very likely we could see Marine Le Pen being elected the next uh, French president. 
mm. uh, come that next election uh, as a result of these policies. And there's no doubt at all, you know, it's not just Britain. This idea, a lot of the Europhiles, the, the, the Ramona say, oh, we've got this horrible racist, xenophobic <laughs> attitude in this country. The whole of Europe is going, uh, what have we done? Inviting all these people, having an open border policy. Sweden, Germany, others are going, we have made a horrible, horrible mistake. This isn't working out. Uh, we're not seeing assimilation. We're not seeing, uh, uh, you know, this working out in our country. And the, and, and people are saying enough is enough. Uh, I can see a point when, you know, we're going to basically have brick walls around the whole of Europe to try and keep people out. Well, there is already, to an extent, some form of a, a, a brick wall being um, created in some, in, I wouldn't say with the physical aspects of the brick wall, but actually in the way that you look at Italy now has said that they will not allow boats that come across into their country unless they've been approved and go yeah. to a single port in Italy. You also have the rise of the AFD that is looking at the lack of integration of uh, mass immigration into Germany. <clears throat> and we remember in 2014, there was 1.2 million and 1.1 million around the next year uh, who came when, when Merkel opened the borders to them. In fr Spain, you have uh, the rise of a party that wants to, to use nationalism and stronger borders as part of its control. Uh, the realism is that the European Commission has accepted that 60% of all of those who are now entering the European Union, in one way or another, is migration purposes, yeah. is economic, not genuinely yeah, asylum. Exactly. And, we, and, we've all, and we've all known that, haven't we? Stephen Wolfe, we'll have to leave it there, Director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Thank you for that.